guys, Toycade here and welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I did a video and to be honest, there hasn't been much happening in the home arcade market in 2023. IR Arcade's gone, Act Game hasn't released anything new and Arcade 1UP has been very underwhelming with its 2023 release so far. Well until now. This machine here is probably the only cab that has caught my attention and it has one of my all time favourite games that I couldn't resist having in my collection. So let's check out this Time Crisis cab together. Time Crisis, RK 1UP's third shooter cab, but the first with a pedal and also the first release of their new deluxe range that doesn't use a riser anymore. But the huge problem, or should I say the huge increase, is the price. The MSRP for Time Crisis cab is 749 US, but in Australia, it's 1495. Yes, that's 1500 Australian dollars. Is this really worth 1500? Let's put this in perspective. For 1500, you could buy at least two PlayStation 5, three Nintendo Switches, or even this Trulex candy cab, which is commercial grade. In this video, I'll be covering the unboxing, the overall build, the gun, the pedal, gameplay, the good and the bad, would I recommend it, and my final thoughts. So if there's a certain section you're interested in, feel free to skip to that bit, as I'll be leaving the timestamps in the description below. This cab comes with four games. Time Crisis, the marquee title of the cab, and the only game that uses the pedal. Released back in 1995 and being the first shooter that incorporates the ability to hide or cover, and is a classic that led to four other sequels. Steel Gunner, Namco's first light gun game released back in 1990 in Japan. The classic police versus terrorist plot, it was well received by all gamers all over the world that led to the sequel one year later. Steel Gunner 2, which happens to be the third title on this cab. Point Blank, the last game, but the main reason why I bought this cab. Point Blank was released back in the arcades in 1994 and is also known as Gun Bullet in Japan. Point Blank is a fast paced game that is non-violent where players compete against each other to see who is a better sharpshooter. There are a lot of challenges over different difficulties that you'll never get bored. Point Blank is one of my all time favourite games that brings back a lot of memories. I played this game a lot during my uni years and easily a game for all ages that has unlimited replay value. Let's quickly go over the packing and what's inside. The retail box itself is a standard RK1 packaging. The box is not as flashy as the last cab I bought, which is Marvel vs Capcom 2. That really caught my attention. This one's more toned down with just a picture of the cab, additional info such as the app games and the size of the cab. Inside the box is well packaged and protected and the panels, as you can see, have sufficient protection. Inside you'll find three boxes, a bunch of panels and a bag of goodies to construct the cabs. And for the record, I had no defective damage part, which is probably the first for me for an RK1 product. There were lots of panels for these cabs and I did feel overwhelmed when I saw how many parts there were. It felt like there were more panels than the previous cab, but this could be because this cab now incorporates a topper, which is built separately and attaches to the top of the cab. What I was really keen to see was the two most used part of the cab. The first being the included light guns using Sindon technology, and out of the box they look good. Just hope they fit the part during gameplay, which we'll find out later in the video. The second item I was keen to see was the pedal, as this item was getting a lot of footwork from Time Crisis, and it really needs to be sturdy and be able to stand the test of time. Let's start with the pedal. Overall, it feels very plasticky and does feel a bit hollow, so there isn't much weight. As you can see, they've added some rubber grips at the bottom to help support any movement while this is being abused by your foot. The very thin piece of metal looks very cheap, and it's more of a cosmetic to give it the heavy duty look. Now to the light gun, and immediately I really like the feel of these guns. There's a subtle RK 1UP logo which adds a nice touch, but as soon as I pull the trigger, I'm presented with a very unpleasant resistant. Houston, we have a problem. Which wasn't what I was expecting. This looks to be providing some kind of manual mechanic recoil function, and it doesn't feel good. Any RK enthusiast will be put off by this function. Even at this point of unboxing, I already had a bad feeling about this product, purely by pulling this trigger. We'll talk more about this later in the video, but it should be noted that you can disable this by locking the recoil function. So building this cab is no different from other cabs. The only difference here is really there is no riser anymore. So the panels will be joined via the middle bracket provided. And additionally, there's a topper for the light up marquee, which really makes this cab quite tall and really close to full size, especially when placed next to other RK 1UP cabs. Overall building this took me around two hours. I did have a lot of trouble with the gun panel which wouldn't fit properly and it took me about 30 minutes to work it out so make sure you take your time when doing the control panel all parts included look good from the marquee to the fold coin door 
I even suspect that the MDF is slightly thicker than previous models. The odd standout was the hole or the slot at the bottom of the cab for the pedals. It seems they designed it so you can place the pedal into the slot and when not used, but also allow you to hide or extend the cord when playing Time Crisis. Once fully built, the cab does look okay. The first thing you notice is the height of the cab. This is really a welcome design change. Having the extra height from the marquee topper really brings it to a full size cab experience. Even with the Marvel vs Capcom 2, no matter how stunning it looked, the size really brings it back down that it's really just a toy. The height can only distract you to an extent until you notice how small the screen is. Maybe the height actually draws you to the screen because based on the height and the bezel size, you'll think that the screen should be bigger. The topper and the control panel is kind of an odd design. Previously in the Marvel vs Capcom 2 cab, they widened the cab by having the side panels of the control panel on the outside of the two inner panels of the main cab which I really liked and mentioned in my Marvel vs. 2 Capcom review video. The minor change of adding these additional side panels had a huge impact on the visual department, but they've gone the opposite here. And I get they're trying to mimic the original cab design, but the cab is just too skinny and thin. Let's talk about the front panel. The fold coin door is firstly too low, and if you look lower at the cab and move the pedal away, you can clearly see the design flaw here. It just looks incomplete, like it's missing something. By just looking at the bottom of the front panel, you'll think it's missing the riser, but that's yesterday. This doesn't need it. This is just really missing a base panel to protect the bottom of the front panel itself. The front panel basically has no protection. If you accidentally pull it forward or backwards and clip onto something, you may snap or damage the panel because the MDF is not thick here. So this is something owners need to be wary about when moving this cab. There is no front panel protection. The Lilac Marquee looks nice, though it does seem to be missing the Namco branding at the bottom of the area that can be found on the original arcade version. The speakers are good, though they are a little weak during startup. <laughs> But for gameplay, they are fine. Overall, the cab looks okay. I wasn't blown away after building this like I was with the Big Blue and the Marvel vs Capcom 2 cab. I think there are a few reasons for this. Some obvious design flaws that was glaringly obvious, especially while building it. From the small screen to the very low coin door to the hole at the bottom of the cab and the cheap pedal. These design flaws, along with the $1,500 price tag that I paid, lingered at the back of my mind while building this. It really dictated the disappointment once completed. Maybe my point of view would have been different if this was a 500 US or 800 Australian. The expectation would have been lower and the flaws can be overlooked, but yeah, that's just how I feel. Enough about the hardware. Let's look at the gameplay and then talk about my experience playing these classics. So after playing this cab for two weeks, my impression hasn't really changed. Let's start with the Sinden technology. This is my first time using Sinden guns and noticeably there's a slight delay in your aim and shoot and you really need to adjust your game to suit the technology. The white border isn't pleasant to the eye but overall Sinden technology behind this cab is not perfect but solid enough to support the game within. Now let's talk about the biggest problem with this cab, the screen. Firstly, this is a BOE screen. We all know by now RK1S BOE screens are a very good quality screen that gives vibrant clear pictures from all angles. So huge tick there. For someone like me who's six foot one, it is a tad low for gun games, especially when most of the time you're standing up. So that's just a minor negative and not really the issue. The real issue here is the screen is just too small. There is no way to sugarcoat this. A gun game on a 17 inch is kind of pointless, I hate to say it. Half the experience playing light gun games in the arcade was being able to be a cop, a cowboy, a hot shot, be able to move the gun and find a target and shoot. But playing these games on a tiny screen gives you none of that experience. It was more of a workout for 
for your risk because that's the most you'll be doing. It's just so underwhelming. It leaves a margin for error to be very small, especially for such games like Point Blank, where the challenges are very difficult and no margin of error with aiming on this 17 inch screen. I don't even think 19 inch is sufficient, but for the price you're paying, you probably expect that at a minimum. With such a small screen, it's going to be tight with two adult players. Playing with my wife, I found it passable, but not ideal. Let's talk about the guns. They looked apart, the they feel apart, the but the recoil function is a huge disappointment. Pulling a trigger should be just pulling a trigger and not trying to kill two birds with one stone or one bullet in this case. But this is what RK1UP is trying to achieve and it misses the target literally because you just want to shoot and not to have to sacrifice response time and also your strength and enjoyment for the recoil function. This is poorly designed whoever thought of this. By you pulling the trigger on the gun, you are also manually triggering the recoil function. But in doing this, you're exerting extra strength with each trigger just for the force feedback which makes no sense and your fingers get tired really quick. Luckily you can lock this off without sacrificing response time. But for 1500, where is the proper recoil function to give you the arcade experience? This manual recoil is not genius, it's just dumb, it's not enjoyable, it's not practical long term, it's just wrong. Rapid fire also doesn't work with these guns, not sure if it's caused by the gun design, but for games like Point Blank, we all know there are quite a few number of challenges where rapid fire is required. But nope, this doesn't work out of the box, maybe I'm missing something, maybe it's an easy mod, but it's another disappointment that ruins the Point Blank experience here. The pedal did an okay job while playing Time Crisis. Firstly, as a 6 foot 1 guy who wears size 11 shoes, the pedal is a tad small and as you can see, the rubber grips had trouble stabilizing the pedal and it kept moving backwards with each step and it was actually a distraction. My other dislike about this piece was having to pull it out and in, which kind of takes away the arcade experience and looks very messy. But this is due to the design of the cabs, as the original arcade cabs had a mirror type screen mounted at the back of the cab, which allowed the pedals to be at the bottom and fixed to the cab. This design would have been possible with arcade one up and it's the only compromise was to have this messy design set up. This limitation in design also impacted the arcade experience for Point Blank. With Point Blank, beside the trigger button on the gun, the second most important button is the 1P or 2P button on the control panel. This helps fasten and skip screen, but with the screen mounted so forward there is no way to play point bank so close and will require you to stand back and the ability to skip screen by pressing this on button on the control panel is taken away. These are just small quirks with the design but it's actually a quite important for games like point blank. This can be easily fixed by allowing the secondary button on the gun to do this. Let's hope RK1UP fixes this in a future update. Yes. With all these negative mentioned above I still found some enjoyment amongst all these frustrations especially with point blank. Point blank was was the main reason why I purchased this cab and the actual game is really the only saving grace here. Point blank with the family and friends is just priceless fun. My kids love this game so much and I'm glad because it's the only thing about this cab that gave me a smile and appreciation that RK1UP made this. Let's summarize the good and bad of this cab. The good. Classic Namco light gun games, Time Crisis is an all time classic that is still enjoyable to play but my favorite point blank is the game that will never disappoint. Endless replay value, a great party game a game that never gets old. Taller cab. The increase in height is a welcome design change and I hope they keep increasing the height of the cab to reach that full size potential. BOE screen. Good old quality BOE is back and continues to deliver vibrant pictures. Sindon light guns. The guns look good, feel good and I'm glad RK1 up didn't skip in this area. These guns feel very similar to the RK version though it's lighter but for the home arcade it's pretty good. No more risers. Hope these deluxe version remain the core of their product moving forward. Leaderboards. Though the live Wi-Fi function is now standing across the range, having leaderboard really adds replay value with this function. The bad. The screen size is just too small for these Namco games or any shooting games. The fact that we're in 2023 and we still have RK machines with 17 inch is very comical. RK 1UP really need to get with the times. This isn't 2018 anymore. It's been 5 years since the launch of the first RK 1UP and they're still delivering 17 inch screens with their products, where the price has increased dramatically. It's just an insult to the consumers. The recoil function. It's just a joke. It's not practical, it diminishes the point of light gun games. This probably is the worst innovation I've seen from RK1UP and I just can't see anyone who can be a fan of this manual recoil. Definitely a huge L here. No rapid fire ability. It could be just me, but I couldn't get manual rapid fire working as I would with the RK versions. For games like Point Blank, 
this is a must. The front panel design. I'm not a fan of this huge hull design at the base of the cab. The whole front looks incomplete and poorly executed. The fact that it didn't protect the base of the front panel is a huge oversight. And once you remove the pedal, you start to think why. The pedal being too small and moving around with each step was a problem while playing Time Crisis. I felt they could have made this bigger to cater for the bigger adults like myself. But even then, I suspect that this won't resolve the pedal from moving around. It's just an unfortunate problem inherited by the design. This really needed to be fixed onto the cab. But the way the cab was designed, this was not possible and really a distraction while playing Time Crisis. The overall cab seems to be an overall miss. The marquee topper feels like an afterthought, especially from the back. The control panel could have been an improved visual impact if they followed the Marvel vs Capcom 2 panel design. The bezel looks incomplete, there is no Namco branding and there is also no RK 1UP branding which is kind of missed here. Overall the colour scheme looks toyish so yeah. I wasn't really blown away by the design unfortunately and it leaves a lot to be desired. So what are my final thoughts? There are no doubts I'm disappointed with the overall product that I paid for. The gun, the pedal, the screen size, there's so much to not like about this cab but we should not forget how far RK1 has come when compared to the original Gen 1 days which was bare bones with minimal features. But now we have taller cabs, no more risers, improved BOE screen, plug and play with leaderboards, ethernet ports, light up marquees and fold coin doors. So RK1 up has come a long way with this product and this cab is their first title with a pedal so there will be a lot of flaws with the first iteration of a cab design. The real issue here as it was with my last RK1 Up cab I reviewed is the price. 750 US or 1500 Australian dollars doesn't justify what you're getting here. Sure the gun games are more expensive than the standard controllers I understand that but for the price it has to deliver either good value which it won't since it only has four games therefore it needs to deliver a good experience and sadly it falls very short of that. It doesn't deliver the visual due to the small screen. It doesn't deliver the experience due to an annoying recoil function with the small screen. In saying that, the game did make my kids happy. They love Point Blank and I'm not surprised about that. That game is an all time classic and they don't know any better on how good it was in the arcade as a comparison. But for that reason alone, it's probably not enough for me to keep this cab and most likely I'll be moving on from this cab and hope the next version of arcade when it releases addresses all these floor designs. Unless money is not an issue and you're a diehard fan of Time Crisis that is happy to play a gun game on a tiny screen or willing to drop more funds to upgrade the screen, I recommend giving this a pass or wait until this cab goes on sale if you really want to add it to your collection. Alright guys, that's all for this review. I really hope you liked this video and found it very informative. If you did, hit that like button and share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing to support the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.